Hi, I'm Alex Dutchbury and welcome to Art Class, a series of videos teaching you the key skills needed to create great art. Today I'm going to teach you about model making, the properties of using clay and some of the skills needed to create really cool looking 3D sculptures. Do I know the properties of clay so I can make a 3D version of a 2D design? And do I know how to mould, manipulate and attach pieces of clay together to form a strong model? Although I'm going to be using clay for this demo, you could use something like plasticine which you can get easily in a shop. All you really need to do though also in preparation is getting yourself an apron, a glass or mug of water and also see if you can find around the house something like a cocktail stick which will be used to score little details and apply the clay together. Okay first we need to prepare the clay. So what I'll do is maybe take off about a third of your clay just break it off, put it to one side. You're going to use that later to build the features with. And then we need to kind of smooth this off and basically create a nice rounded circle with it. But at the same time, we're going to do something which is very similar to when you're kneading dough when you're creating bread. And it's basically use your hand cupped in a kind of oval shape like this and use the palm of the smooth part of your other hand and keep bashing the clay together. Keep turning it in your hand because basically what you're trying to do is squeeze out all of the air inside the clay because you do not want to have any air left inside because you could produce a fantastic looking clay model and then actually when you go to uh, cook it at the end, you put it in something called a kiln, which is basically a big oven which can go up to about a thousand degrees, way hotter than your um, kitchen ovens at home. And actually that will absorb all the excess moisture out and solidify the clay. The problem is, if you've got a lot of air in your model, your model may look fantastic, you put it in the kiln thinking it's all going to come out looking great, but actually if there's an air pocket trapped inside, when it goes up to a thousand degrees, it'll expand and bang, your model will get ruined. So make sure this stage is important. We need to prepare that clay first. Before long though, as you can see, it'll come to a fairly smooth, round looking object, ready to start developing these details on. Use your thumb to press a hole into the back of the clay to create almost like a small bowl shape. Keep turning it as you do it and press, don't press too deeply at one time, but keep rotating it. You want to have the clay about one centimeter of thickness all the way around, so don't push your thumb so far through. Then scrunch up some newspaper and put it into the back to make sure that the hollow object won't fall through when you start applying the details on top. Then using your thumbs, press them both in to create the eye sockets. Roll up little balls of clay. These will act as the actual eyes themselves. And then we need to stick the clay together. So score both sections of clay, both pieces of clay, and then apply a little bit of water on top before joining them together. You've got to really make sure that you join the clay together following this process. You can't just mush two bits of clay together because they will just fall back apart. And also you risk damaging the actual shape of the object. So consider the grooving process, almost a bit like if you've got your hands, if you have them with your fingers together and you rub your hands together, it's very smooth. But actually if you spread your fingers apart and then rub your hands together, they interlock, they join together. That's what's happening when you groove the two bits. A little bit of water will just help with the suction, but again, not too much. And don't press too deep with the grooves. You don't want to create any air pockets. So putting it into practice, hatching on the back of the eyeball and then hatching into the eye socket, a little fingertip of water, and then gently squashing them together to fuse those grooves. Then it's the nose. For the nose, take off a bit of clay and create a kind of three-dimensional triangular shape. Doesn't matter and doesn't need to be too specific at this stage. Hatch both the nose area and the nose of clay itself and then attach them on. Once it's attached to the actual face, you can manipulate it a lot more and mold it how you want 
In this case, I'm making it quite stretched out to look a little bit creepy and menacing. For the mouth, it's a similar process to the eye sockets. Use your thumb to squash in a shape that you want and then apply details inside, maybe little triangles for teeth. If you're creating a face like this gargoyle model, try and put some emotion in it. Gargoyles are there to really scare and be sinister. So actually, I'm really thinking about the expressions. Think about your um, cartoons that you sometimes watch where they really narrow the eyebrows to make them look more sinister. The long, evil, creepy nose, a bit like a witch or something. The creepy smile like the Joker in Batman. All of those kind of elements you need to think about. For the lips, first create thin, worm-like shaped bits of clay and score and attach them on. Once they're on the actual model, you can then adjust and manipulate them more. In this case, I'm making them quite sharp and thin-lipped and then angling them up at the edges to have that sinister looking smile. You can also add many other details on as well. So I was thinking, if it's that evil look, a lot of these old gargoyles had horns at the top. Make sure the clay doesn't dry up too much. Your hands are hot and they will absorb the moisture out of it. So if it starts cracking, get some water, just a few fingertips of water and smudge it on. So finally, add any other details you want. Refer to the images that you've got as reference. So they often have very pointy angular features. So the horns on top, even the ears have this pointy, narrow, slightly menacing look to them. It's up to you what you want to put on and what you want to attach, but don't make anything too large. If it sticks out too much, the clay may weigh down and it may fall off or droop down. So you want to have them short and quite stubby to begin with, so it is able to fix to the actual model base itself. Final touches shaping the eyebrows to have that menacing sinister look and a little dot in the middle for the eyeballs and irises. Pause on this part of the video so you can have a look at some of these key pointers that I've said throughout the process. They're very important to follow if you want to do an excellent model. So there you go, an interesting clay gargoyle model and it's got all those protruding features, all of the little details the kind of creased eyes, the sinister or creepy looking sort of long pointed nose, the scary teeth. And if you want to try your own gargoyle model at home, I'll put a sheet on at the end of this video uh, with loads of images and examples of uh, photos of gargoyles. So use those if you want to create your own design. So here are some other examples to look at, each with their own unique and interesting looking features. They look fantastic. Also, clay can be used for anything. Look at these architectural models my GCSE students produced. So there you go, a really fun medium to try. It's a tricky thing to do, but actually if you go wrong, just mush it up and start again. It can really improve your manual dexterity as well. And don't worry if you haven't got a kiln at home. Most people don't, trust me. So you can always just leave it, or in some cases you can buy uh, self-drying clay or plasticine now, which can just be left on the windowsill for a few days, and then it will dry out on its own, and the moisture will get absorbed into the atmosphere. So give it a go, because it can be really fun and quite rewarding. I look forward to seeing how you get on. My name's Alex Stutchbury. Goodbye.